Welcome friends, I'm Bev Adams. I'm an independent demonstrator with Stampin' Up! and today I'm going to show you how to make this lovely little gift item um, for toilet bombs. I saw these toilet bombs on Pinterest and they are very easy to make. Um, they are made out of baking soda and citric acid and then essential oils and they suggested lavender, pepper, peppermint and lemon essential oils and you just mix it up and you put it in a silicone mold and this one had flowers and just pretty little designs um, and they smell great. You drop them in the toilet and they fizz and all of these ingredients really do a good job of cleaning, deodorizing, and um, killing bacteria. So um, it's an easy way to clean and it smells heavenly. Before we get started, I want to tell you you don't need to worry about all the dimensions because you can just print it off my website at bevadams.com and it'll give you all the supplies and directions and dimensions that you'll need. Let's get started. There's a label for the front and the back. Um, I think it's important if you're going to have this in your bathroom to have this labeled so that if you have guests they can use it appropriately. And it's, it does say drop it in toilet bowl to fizz, helps clean and deodorize, and then it's got the, the recipe on the back. The recipe is just kind of um, a quick down and dirty recipe, but if you want the full directions, the, there's a link to where I saw it on Pinterest um, for these to toilet bombs. Um, you're going to need a canning jar, and there are really two sizes of canning jars. Um, and I don't know. If you're using the wide mouth canning jar, you're going to use the circle framelits. You're going to use the fourth largest, not the scallop, two, three, and then the fourth one. And it will cut the perfect size circle to go inside this ball jar lid, like so. And if you're using the standard jar lid, you're going to use the two and a half inch circle punch. And that punches a perfect size to go in this size canning jar. These are both um, half pint size jars and I would really recommend a pint size or even larger. You're going to stamp with Tangerine Tango using the Bloom For You stamp. You're going to want to, when you, when you first mount this stamp, you're going to keep track of which side is the bottom so that it matches your punch. It's not quite symmetrical so pay attention to that. I've marked the bottom of my stamp and then I'm going to stamp three times and you're going to clean the stamp off and I I told myself I was going to stamp the Daffodil Delight first because it's the lighter color and then of course I didn't do that. So you would be wise to stamp the Daffodil Delight first just so that you're less likely to have um, any extra ink on your stamp. And then you're going to stamp one time with Daffodil Delight. And I stamped off the side of the cardstock. That's fine. In fact, I kind of want to because all I want is the center of this flower. 
I'm going to punch the center out and it matches the 7 8 inch scallop circle just perfectly and if I've marked my stamp correctly I think I did these um, will punch out I like the Stampin' Up! on this one made the extended the edge of the flower a little bit past the size of the punch this time um, so that you don't have a white edge on it. Okay, and now we're going to perform a little bit of magic with the Stampin' Pierce mat you're going to put your flowers upside down and you're going to use the back end of your paper piercing tool to just kind of draw little circles around each of the petals and it softens the cardstock and curls it in a little bit and you're going to do that for each of the petals and it's just kind of magic um, you're going to go around the middle a little bit And you're going to do the same thing for the center. It's kind of fun to get the round ones because you can get really oh, quite round with it. So then you've got your three flowers and you're going to put it in the center. And you can use any adhesive for this part. And you just need to rotate the flowers a little bit so they don't quite overlap. Then you're going to stack three dimensionals, one on top of the other. Because, because you've got quite a bit of lift in that circle center and you don't want to lose that and so it's actually three dimensionals high I almost could have put another dimensional in there isn't that pretty? okay so I have the the labels already printed up for you you're going to just cut them out and cut the corners with the Project Life corner punch. These are one and three quarter by two inches. So if you wanted to just write these yourself, you can certainly do that and cut your paper to size. And then I have my Tangerine Tango cardstock that is two by three. Now my punch, maybe it's the way I cut or maybe it's my punch. Some people need to cut them a little bit narrower to fit in, but mine always seem to fit. Slide it all the way in to the scallop top, tag topper punch. And then around these corners When I use adhesives, I always put them on the back 
uh, of my smaller piece. So this goes on the back with the recipe. And this is on the front. And then we have our tag already done. So you're going to fold the baker's twine in half. And I think I've got more than I need because I've got quite a long length of baker's twine. You're going to fold it in half, push the loop through your hole, and then put the ends through the loop and pull those long ends out and then tighten it up. Not super tight, but tight. And then put this on your jar and wrap it around two times each way. So with this end I'm going around two times and then I'm going to hold that and with the other end I'm going to go around two times the other way and that brings me back to where the tag is and I can tie my bow right over where the tag is I think this is going to be such a nice little um, jar to have sitting on my bathroom and I think it'll make a lovely gift. Thank you much for stopping by and come over to BevAdams.com and I've got lots of ideas there too. Thanks. See you soon. Bye.